Hello everyone. Previously, we discussed adding Excel tables into the data model and multiple files using the direct method. Today, we'll use Power Query to load data into the data model. Power Query is a powerful and user-friendly tool that allows you to get and transform data from hundreds of data sources and update an entire report with a click of the refresh button. Just like Power Pivot, Power Query is in Excel and Power BI. If you'd like to know more, keep watching. So I want to share something exciting with you. I had the opportunity to chat with a Microsoft MVP. His name is Wayne Hopkins. He gave me feedback on some of my videos, which I found very useful. If you are not subscribed to his channel, you are missing the opportunity to learn from an expert. The link to his channel is in the description box below. Please check it out. And if you are yet to subscribe to this channel, please click the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you. Let's take a quick look at the data. We have data relating to sales, agent, and product. This is the data we used in the first video on Power Pivot. If you are yet to watch it, the link is in the description box below. Now let's take a look at Power Query. I'm in a blank Excel workbook now. Go to the data tab in the get and transform category. You'll find everything that relates to Power Query. To launch the Power Query window, click on get data and select launch Power Query editor. The Power Query editor window opens up and it's blank now because we are yet to import the data. I'll minimize this so we can see the workbook in the background. Unlike Power Pivot, where you can switch between the workbook and the data model window, you can't do this yet with Power Query. Hopefully, Excel will enable this functionality soon. I understand that opening another instance of Excel is a way to work around that, but it hasn't worked for me. Power Query can import data from hundreds of data sources, text files, folders, the web, Facebook, databases, SharePoint, and lots more. You can import the data right here or from Excel. We'll import the data right here. Some key points you have to note. The formula language used in Power Query is the M formula language, and it is case sensitive, unlike DAX and Excel formulas, which are not. Rest assured, it's very easy and not difficult to grasp at all. Let's go get the data. Click on New Source, File, and select Excel. The Excel file is right here. Select and click Import. There are three worksheets in the file we imported, so check this box to select multiple items. And then check these boxes to select the tables. You see a snapshot of the data, and if they are good, just click OK. On the left side, you'll find a list of the queries. We can combine them into a single query. However, that is not the focus in today's tutorial. I'll cover that in a separate video. On the right side is Query Settings. You can change the name of the query under Properties. All the steps performed are recorded under Applied Steps, and you can edit or delete the steps right here. Power Query does not have an Undo button, but you can remove a step if necessary. Let's look at each table to determine if there are any transformations to be made. So we'll start with Agent. You can use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl, Shift, Plus or Minus to zoom in or out. Power Query has automatically done some transformations, which we can see here. You can click on the icon next to it to view the details. For change type, Power Query automatically detected the data type in each field. These are all texts and have been detected correctly. You can view the M code relating to this step in the formula bar. If you want to change the data type, click on Data Type in the Home tab. A faster way is to click this icon and select from the options. If you take a closer look at the data, you'll notice that the table headers have not been detected. 
and we can fix that by clicking this command in the home tab use first row as headers or click on this icon and select use first row as headers take a look at the applied steps power query has recorded the step the name is fine so no changes required here let's move on to the next table sales data this looks okay and the steps look good the data type is good so we don't have to make any more changes let's move on to the last table product we need to promote headers here so click this icon and select use first row as headers now the data is ready to be loaded into the data model so let's go to the home tab watch this closely click on the drop down for close and load and select close and load to if you select close and load it automatically loads the data to a table in a new excel worksheet however you can override this default setting in query option so select close and load to this brings up the import data window you can load the data into a table directly into a pivot table or chart or just as a connection by loading as a connection you can load more data sets than what excel can handle and still keep your file size small so select only create connection and check this box add this data to the data model click ok all the queries are listed here and if you close this pane you can open it by clicking queries and connection in the data tab and if you decide you need a table later on just right click and select load to table now let's go to the power pivot tab click on manage to launch the power pivot window all the tables have been loaded click on diagram view to connect the related fields to each other the lookup tables are agents and products and they have unique values which are related to the sales data. So drag product to product and customer to customer. Go back to data view and let's create a measure for total sales. Click the cell under sales value in the calculation area and click auto sum. Change the name to total sales and change the format. Now let's insert a pivot table. Let's drag agent to rows and total sales to values. One cool thing about creating a measure is that the number format doesn't change. Unlike implicit measures in the regular pivot table. Now let's assume Joe leaves the company and his customers were reassigned to Kamala. How can we reflect this update in our report? It's easy. Let's go back to the source file. Let's go to agent and change Joe to Kamala. Save and close. Now let's go back to the workbook and click refresh. You can right click on the pivot table or query or click the icon right here. Watch what happens. The pivot table will update with the new information just like that. Isn't Excel cool? In the next video, we'll take a look at creating KPIs in Power Pivot.